Hi everyone. In my previous video, we looked at the easiest way to create workspaces in ServiceNow. If you want to start learning about workspaces and building them, take a look at the UI Builder Fundamentals course on the ServiceNow learning portal. In this video, in fact, this will be the first in a series of videos in the coming weeks, I would like to tackle one of the hardest components in a workspace, declarative actions. If you've not heard of declarative actions or DAs, these are basically the workspace equivalent of UI actions. Actually, DAs are not technically a component. They are a configuration object that can appear as buttons in an action bar, as standalone buttons, list actions, or as field decorators, that is a small button alongside the form field. For many of you, me included, DAs have been a source of frustration. Why do we need to manually create so many records just to have one single button on the workspace? What happened to my beloved and simple UI actions? So let's actually start by comparing UI actions with declarative actions. In general, both are displayed as buttons or menu items on forms and lists, but how they are implemented are vastly different. The name declarative action actually refers to a method that is used to implement them. When writing software, a specific programming method will be used to implement a requirement and write the code. Declarative means to do something, often achieved using expressions. And the opposite is, or the opposite of decorative is imperative. Imperative means explicitly defining how to achieve something, the steps and their order. And these are often achieved using statements. Let's take a look at a simple example in JavaScript. On the left hand side here, we have an example of an imperative statement. It's a simple function and it's doing nothing more than printing out a string to the log. Okay. On the right hand side, we've got another simple function, but this time it's taking input. It's doing something with that input, in this case, converting it to lowercase, and then it's returning that output as well. Okay. And this is what a de declarative function will do. We'll actually just do something and spit out something back. If we take a look at an example more directly related to ServiceNow, if we wanted to get the username of the currently logged in user, there's a few ways we can do that. Again, on the left-hand side, using an imperative method, we specify the instructions step-by-step -step that we're going to execute to get that username. The first will be to do a glide record query of the user session table. And the record in there that is marked if, as active is actually the, the currently logged in user. And then we're going to output that username in a statement, okay? On the right-hand side, we've got a much simpler example, a much easier way, in fact, of returning the username. And that is with the glide system method called get username. So this implicitly takes the currently logged in user as the input and then outputs the username all in one method. Simple. And we can actually apply this, for example, if we wanted to trigger an event because we can actually call that function, get username, to add the username to the event record that's triggered. So if we apply these concepts of service now, UI actions are imperative because we place a button in a certain position and define the script logic to execute when that button is clicked. That is, the appearance and all the logic are bundled together. So if you wanted to have the same functionality on another page, you would have to duplicate that UI action record. Declarative actions, on the other hand, are decorative because not only is the appearance and the logic separated, but within the appearance settings and within the logic, there is further separation into smaller components that are responsible for doing just one thing. You can think of it as modular, but the modules are responsible for only one part of the declarative action. For example, the appearance of the button, the position of that button in the action bar, and in which action bar or bars it appears in, and any parameter values that may be passed to an event, and so forth. As a result, declarative actions give us much more flexibility than previously. The downside, however, for us, at least for the moment, is that there are a lot of configuration records that must be created manually. 
But once you have much of the framework set and in place, making adjustments is in fact a lot easier. And no doubt the development team is busy at work to bring you improvements to the user interface to take away this complexity. A classic case of agile development. In the next video, we're going to create a declarative action from scratch. But let's now review quickly the components that we're going to use in that video. So this image here summarizes some of these main components. Our starting point will be the action assignment. So this is actually what we call the declarative action. It's actually one component of many that we need to create. You can see for all the components here, I've given the table names as well, because not all of these tables will have a module linking to them. So we create our declarative action. And whenever we do that, the system will automatically create a form action. When you create a UI action and make that available in a configurable workspace, the system will create a form action record for you as well, automatically. So this is simply a reference either to a UI action or a declarative action. For these form actions, we need to specify a layout item. This actually specifies the appearance of the button, the size of the button, and so forth. That layout item then belongs to a specific layout, uh, which is actually the uh, layout of the action bar itself that you then reference in the workspace page. The components on the left-hand side are actually all grouped together in kind of like a meta container called a UX Actions Configuration. So it doesn't actually have any logic uh, of its own other than it's a container for any UI actions, declarative actions, such as form actions, field decorators, uh, related list actions, etc., etc., all in one spot. But in the next video, we're going to create a declarative action together using these components. So stay tuned for that one.